Amen. This is the place to be, yeah? Sunday morning in the house of God, ready to worship Him, ready to receive from Him, ready to even bless each other. You know, Scripture talks about, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves. We somehow have done. And that's God's will for us, to be together and worship Him together. And there's a special anointing that comes into our midst when we are worshiping and praising God together. And, and I pray that you will sense that special anointing today as you worship the Lord. As you lift your hands in praise to him, I pray you will sense his presence around you, in front of you, behind you, all around you. Because his presence is precious. It truly is precious. And we pursue the presence of the Lord, don't we? That's what we do. We pursue his presence. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. There's a scripture this morning the Lord gave me. And it's a beautiful one. It says in Psalms 90, verse 14. It says, satisfy us every morning with your mercy so that we may sing joyfully and rejoice all our days. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Satisfy us. Another script, uh, version says, fill us each morning. It shows that we need to be filled with the loving kindness of God every single blessed morning. You need to be in that position to receive his love. For only his love will satisfy. And I'm sure you know that by now. I've tried this that, and everything else. Only his love can satisfy. So if you may, could we stand in his presence, if you may, if you can, if you're able. And just lift your hands to Jesus, if you may. And tell the Lord, I'm here, Lord Jesus. I'm here to receive from you, Jesus. I'm here to give to you as well, Jesus. I'm here, Lord, for, for a touch from you, Jesus. Oh, Lord God, I didn't come from, for anyone else. I didn't come from, for the person beside me or on the left or the right. I came for you, Jesus. And I'm sure, yes, you did that. So as we lift our hands and worship and begin to praise God, as the team leads us in worship, oh, get ready to receive. Get ready to receive. Thank you, Father. You're worthy of our praise today, Jesus. You're worthy of our worship today, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you're near the brokenhearted, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our To our God, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. 
to our God every word of worship with one accord every praise every praise is to our God sing hallelujah to our God to our oh glory hallelujah with one
God. Thank you, Lord. Holy, holy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, holy. Holy God. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless him. Oh, I like us. Oh, we praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We lift up your name, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and mercy, Lord. Your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You never, never, ever leave us, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory and honor to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your mighty name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll invite our pastor now, Pastor Andy, to come and bring the word. You, We're blessed to have this man of God. Patience wants to give a word, so, yeah. As we worship in the Lord, I uh, just saw in my mind's eye um, the Lord was inviting us to to lay our heads on his lap and rest. just as um, a parent would invite their child to lay their head on their lap and rest. And the scripture that came with that, which is one that we know very well, is Matthew eleven twenty-eight, where it says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And I sense the Lord is saying, there's some here who feel weary and tired and are in need of rest, and the Lord is inviting you to come and place your head on his lap and rest. Um, I remember when I had my last child, Natasha, I would have been very, before that, very disciplined to wake up and pray and have times with the Lord. But when I fell pregnant with her, I found I had no energy at all. And, and the Lord just said for me to rest. And within most of those times of nine months, I never had a, a devotion. <laughs> I just sat and just allowed the Lord to minister to me. And it was one of the most amazing encounters I had within those nine months. And so sometimes we feel we have to read the Bible, do this, do that, do that. And we're struggling to try and really keep up with the Lord, so to speak. And we feel that if we don't do these things, then we won't get blessed or whatever. But the Lord is just saying, come to him. Just rest. Just sit. Put some music on and just allow God to minister to you. There's more strength in that than you striving. Okay, I gotta read my Bible. You get what I'm saying? The Lord said, just just rest. So I just feel that some people here that need to hear that you're tired physically, you're tired emotionally, mentally, and God says, just come. Amen. 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 Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's kind of my heart. <laughs> what I have in my heart, even though I have a teaching. Um, it's great to see Valerie with her baby. Amen. 
our latest edition. Two babies last week, so that's one of them. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He who began a good work in us. Amen. He begun it. It's not finished yet. Amen. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. That tells us that work is not, you're, you're, you're not complete yet. Amen. You're a work in progress. There's a bit of work going on in your life. You see the building next door? A couple of weeks ago, that looked like a pretty altogether building. But because they're transforming it into our county library, it's just a complete shell at the moment. The roof is down. Every single thing is gutted. All is left is four walls. But we look at that next year, it'll be a beautiful, state-of-the-art, beautiful building. So there's a work in progress. When you look at it, you'll see all the flaws and all the failings and... You know, it's not very in, in it's not very, um, what's the right word I was going to say there? Aesthetic. In habitable. habitable. <laughs> I thought of it, but I couldn't say it. My vocabulary, <laughs> inhabitable. <laughs> so, amen. Yeah. He who began a good work in you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a work in progress. You know, so don't be discouraged if you haven't arrived. Don't be discouraged with yourself if you're not fully there yet. You know, if it looks a bit disgusting <laughs> and it looks a bit inhabitable <laughs> or all that because we're a work in progress. Amen. We all are. We all are a work in progress. And I'm talking today along the lines of um, just another trait there of the orphan spirit was self-rejection coming out of comparing yourself with others or an image that you're affirmed and you're positive because you know you have such value to God. When we decide to follow Christ, we become children of God. That is our new identity. However, it takes much longer for us to begin to live that way. We live sometimes out of a sense of being an orphan instead of the sense of being a son. So we're talking today along the lines of self-image. And um, just so conscious about patience's word there and what I was feeling on my heart even, you know, for that healing anointing to come. I'm going to share a word, but I also want to pray that the Lord will come and pour out his healing because we need healing. We need to be rebuilt. As Jeremiah said, I will build you and you'll be rebuilt. We need a rebuilding. There's a, re, there's, a, there's a construction work that's going on in our minds and in our soul. And um, so talking along the lines of self-image, um, let's just pray before we read the scripture. Father, we just thank you today, Lord. We thank you that you're with us. I thank you that, Lord, that word, we can rest in you. And we can just rest in who we are. We can receive your presence. And I pray, Lord, even as I share this word today, I pray... The outcome will be healing, healing for our souls. And we welcome that healing anointing. Jesus, you are a healer. You heal us on the inside. You heal us physically, but you heal us mentally. You heal us emotionally. You heal our image of ourself, Lord. Lord, where we have wrong image, where we have a poor image of ourself today, I pray healing will come. Healing will come to our minds and healing will come to how we see ourselves. Jesus. And how you see us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Way, way back in Genesis 1, we read a verse that says, 126, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Next verse says, then God, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created a male and female, he created them. Amen. So that's you and I. We were created, uh, we were created in the image of God. 
and in the likeness of God. That's actually awesome in itself. If the truth of that was to ring into our hearts fully, that would radically transform us. On a couple of hundred years, the psalmist said in Psalm 139, 14, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that is the truth. That is the truth about you. And that is the truth about me. But along our journey, we find, you know, life, circumstances, even the enemy comes to try steal away the truth of who we are as people and tries to, tries to change the image, the image of how precious and how wonderful we are and mars that and changes that on the inside, in our minds and in our hearts. And then we, we, um, we pick up a lot, words that have been spoken over us. Um, you know, I told you some time ago about my hurling career <laughs> and how words that were spoken over me way back in the tech, way back in, in secondary school, which caused me to make a decision I'm not talking out again. And you know, that can be, and I could give you loads of examples in my own personal life, but you'd probably say to yourself, yeah, there was words spoken over me. And we need those words broken. Amen. And we need healing to come. And there's experiences that happen to us in life, just as we journey through this broken world that doesn't always affirm us that we are created in the image of God and that we're wonderful. We get a lot of stuff that says the opposite to us. And it's sown into our hearts until we reach a point that our image of ourselves is so poor that we lose confidence as a man or we lose confidence as a woman. And we become, the enemy's tactic would be to beat us down. Just keep us down. And, uh, but thank God there's healing in Christ. Amen. Amen. There's freedom. God can come and break the effect of those words off your life. The effect of those circumstances off your life. He begun the work and he will finish it. Amen. The enemy wants to undermine how unique and how precious and how valuable you and I are as individuals created in his image. You know, when you think of it, there's never, ever, ever been another person like you. And there never, ever, ever will be. There's never, ever been a Gene Nulty in creation before. I was going to say that, but I won't. <laughs> Gene said, thank goodness for that. <laughs> but there's never, ever been an Andy Gilfile. Height, weight, personality, character, DNA. Absolutely amazing. There's never, ever, ever been a person like you before. And there never, ever, ever, ever will be. We are unique. You are unique. You were created in the image of God. And you are wonderfully made. God knew you. God knew your height you were going to be. He knew the color hair you were going to have. If you have hair. <laughs> Sorry. For all those who have. <laughs> I can pray for you. I feel a healing anointing. <laughs> But we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we're created uniquely in the image of God and in the likeness of God. And that's more than just our physical, ain't it? You know, it's our personality. It's our spirit, soul, and body. We're three, aren't we? We're made up of our spirit, soul, and body. So the physical side of us is only, is only a third of us, really. And this is the part of us that's actually going back to the dust. 
But sometimes it's the part of us that we get the most hang-ups and the most struggles. And uh, it's, the, it's the part of us that sometimes we can, we can get hurt by. People speaking words against us or, or, you know, if we're truly honest, we all probably would say, if I was to say to you today, could you change anything physical about yourself? We'd all probably say, yeah. Some of us would have a longer list than others. <laughs> we would, if we're honest. And um, because what we've done, we've grown into a world and we compare ourselves with somebody else around us. We compare ourselves with others. And comparing, like if you were the only person that was ever put on this earth, and you never saw another human being, you'd be happy. <laughs> you actually wouldn't have any hang-ups about yourself. The size, your weight, color of your hair, size of your nose, size of your ears, etc., etc., etc. You know, you wouldn't. So why do we get, or why do people get those kind of hang-ups about themselves? Because they see somebody else or to get this perfect image of how it should be. And that all goes on in the, in the, in the, um, you know, in the public world, in Hollywood and all. And people that have money, we see them going on a journey and they'll change their lips and they'll change their nose. And it, you ever see it when they just take it too far? <laughs> you know, they end up worse than what they ever were. I remember looking at Michael Jackson, I thought way back before he ever started anything, he was beautiful. He was lovely. I don't know if you've ever seen some of the pictures. He was not he was normal. I mean, you know where he ended up with all the changes that he tried to bring in. All because I read a little bit. His father, he, well, he, he was words spoken over him. Circumstances that pushed him down for who he was. So he went on that journey. And you will find and you'll see it that anyone that goes on that journey, that never, it doesn't really, really solve the problem. Because our identity and our self-image comes from God. Yeah. And actually comes from how God sees us. And God can change the image we have of ourselves when we look to God and we hear from God. How does God see me? God sees me wonderfully made. God sees me created in his image. And when we allow God to speak speak into those areas, that can bring transformation. And that can bring a breaking to the experiences and the negativity that have been sown into us. And um, we're unique. You're unique. If you're 5'5 five five or 5'10 or 6'4 and full of muscle, you're unique the way you are. And we're, we are wonderfully made. Amen. Um, and those lies that come in to our life and those circumstances, sometimes they can go deep. They can go deep into us. And it's not just a, a kind of a quick prayer. I remember reading that verse in Psalm 139 as a younger believer. And like, I'm wonderfully made. And because I had so many hang-ups about myself, it just washed off me. It took more than just reading one promise or one verse one day, it just washed over me. It needed, you know, you ever go to the hygienist? I don't go that often now, but get your teeth clean and then she might say, the next time you need a deep clean. There's a deep clean, you know, and sometimes with us, God is not just doing the outside. He wants to go deeper into our hearts. He wants to go deeper into our lives because there's things there that, that um, have wounded us. There's things there that have wounded and marred the image we have of ourselves, And we've journeyed from a true image which comes from God, how God sees us, that we are wonderfully made. And we've journeyed from that. And some, I think even some people that commit suicide it's really down to, a lot of it is down to just how to see themselves. Mm -hmm. And we're on a journey back now as sons in the kingdom 
to begin to see ourselves the way God sees us. It actually changes you. I think you grow a few inches taller on the inside. I remember getting revelation before that I was an ambassador for Christ. And it was like as if, bang, I sprung up on the inside. Do you know why people are beaten down sometimes on the outside? Because that's the image. That's what they're carrying on the inside. But God wants to lift that off us. He wants to bring healing to those areas of our life. And sometimes it's a deeper, it's a deeper cleaning that's needed with his word and with his prayer. Because, you know, things do not just disappear. I think we've been given a, a real God-given ability to shelve things in our soul and in our hearts so we don't just malfunction when uh, negative things happen to us. You see people that get even the horrific abuse that happens to them in life. Been given, we've been given a God-given ability to shelve that, close the door, so to speak, and journey on in life and try and make the best we can. But as Christians now, we have the keys to actually open the door and begin to let those things out and begin to let Jesus in and begin to visit those areas of pain. You know, um, sometimes there's, there's pain in healing because we have to face the pain. I don't know if you've ever experienced it. You probably have. We have to visit a negative circumstance to happen to you. You have to go there. Or you have to let Jesus in. But in doing that, there's healing. There's pain sometimes in healing. But sometimes as Christians, what we do, we push it all down because we're new creations. We believe that, don't we? We're, we're new in Christ. All things have become new. But the work has only started. And he will be faithful to complete it. You know, I had something come up recently. And it was something that happened to me over 30 years ago my Christian walk and I was just chatting with someone and it was a, you know it was a real negative experience I had and I've, I've told it here many times you know where I was on drugs and I was stripped naked but something popped up and I was telling these people about it and as I was talking I hit an area of emotional pain just while I was talking about it and an area of brokenness in my soul. So where was that all along? That was actually there, but it was actually shelved. So I, I acknowledged that. I thought, yeah, actually, Lord. <laughs> Someone actually said, did you ever get prayer into that area? <laughs> actually, I don't, I don't know if I actually ever did. So I did. I opened it up and allowed Jesus in. To those, and it was an area of humiliation and embarrassment and shame. Because I was dragged naked in a police wa uh, paddy wagon, we called them, and brought into a prison cell and thrown in front of people. Really degrading, humiliating experience. Never really faced how traumatic it was upon me. You know. But God let me journey on in life until the time came. Am I going to let Jesus in? Yeah. And I was amazed. I let him in and he began some healing in me and I've begun a journey in that area. I tell you, it was uncovered. There was a number of areas uncovered in my heart just in that particular experience. So what I'm saying is that if God comes and puts his finger on something, don't push it back in. You know? Did you ever see the, the dog trying to get through the door? you kicking it, get back in there. <laughs> Or the skeleton trying to get out of the cupboard. Get back in. Open the door. Let it out. You have Jesus now. He's the great physician. Psalm 23 says, He's the restorer of our souls. And I think it's times we carry baggage as Christians. And... Whereas we can have something better, we can bring Jesus in and we can allow his healing and his restoration into those areas. Amen. He is the healer. He is the restorer. He brings us back to a place on the inside that we see ourselves, you know, and we stand tall because we're a woman or because we're a man of God. 
We're made in his image. And we're made in his likeness. And you know, there's a man in the Bible called Gideon. He had a very poor image of himself for different reasons because of his household. But God spoke into his life. What did God say? God said to him, mighty man of valor. <laughs> he didn't see himself like that. But God spoke in mighty man of valor. And you know, we need to hear God afresh. And God wants to speak afresh into areas of our image and call us who we really are. And when we open up to that, Gideon's life changed. Gideon went on and with only a small army, he conquered great enemies. If you read the story. And that's like that with us. When there's areas in there, in the area of our image, we, we need to come back and allow God to speak into those areas. Call you what you really are. Beautiful. Wonderfully made. Created in my image. And what will that, that will raise you up. That will raise you up as a woman. That will raise you up as a man. And you'll become who God's called you to be. Amen. So sometimes we need a deeper cleaning than just the surface. We need to open up. And you need discernment, obviously, of what to bring to somebody else and who to bring it to. Someone you can trust and you can say, there's an area that has popped up in my life. I just, I want to bring it to you and get prayer. It's good to get prayer, isn't it? There's ministry there, there's people there that are, that are gifted in the areas of healing and, you know, um, you can bring it to Jesus. I, I, I live by, if I can bring something to the Lord and receive direct from God myself, I usually don't have to bring it to somebody else. But if there's deeper areas there, or if it's false, if it's areas that I'm struggling with, uh, iniquity, habitual sin, that's when I will bring it to somebody else. Living under the principle of confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you be healed. Now, if you go and break the speed limit, you don't need to come and book an appointment with John and say, John, I broke the speed limit today. <laughs> pray for me. You know, but if it's, a, if it's something that's affecting you long term, it's good to have somebody that you trust, that you can go to, open up and confess that to. Because when you bring it into the light, it breaks the power of it. Yeah. Amen. But that's also true with areas that have been, we've been wounded through life. Words that have been spoken over us. Circumstances that we've been in that just beat us down. I mean, we could stay here all day. If we were to open it up and I was to begin to tell you of all the times I was put down and spoken wrongly, I think the enemy had, had it out for me. <laughs> he had I don't know for you to keep you down. Just don't want you rising up as a warrior. Don't want you rising up into who God wants you to be. So you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Isaiah 61, 7 said, Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Amen. Instead of your shame, the difference between guilt and shame, guilt is when you do something wrong. Shame is when you feel you are wrong. There's something wrong with me. And that's the twisted way about it. Even when children and people get abused, even sexually, they're left with the feeling of there's something wrong with me. You often hear that. And that's shame. And there's something on the inside and you feel, I'm not just quite the full shilling. That's shame. You have shame about who you really, really, really are. And that can, that can come from different angles. The enemy is the abuser. You might have actually had physical abuse, but just words of abuse that put you down. And you feel, I'm just not quite the full shilling. I'm just not quite what I should be and the promise is instead of that shame God will give you double honour God will put his finger on that 
and give you double honor. Amen. So we are wonderfully made. There's a beautiful verse in Matthew 6, 26. And Jesus said, he said, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. He said, but your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Are you, are you today not more valuable than the birds of the air, which don't do anything? They don't do any sowing. They don't do any reaping. They don't do any storing up. I speak that over. Are you not more value than they? And you are. You are more valuable. Amen. You have great value. You only have to look at the price that was paid for you to see how valuable you are. Did you ever ponder on the price that was paid to purchase you? It was the blood of Jesus, Scripture says. He purchased us with his own blood. He came and he paid the price. He purchased us. And that's the value that you have to God. Now, you won't get the value from this world. You might get affirmed and you might get, you know, spoken kind words by people around you. But we have to look to God for our value. Yeah. And we have to look to God for their true self-image. Psalm 34 says, they looked to him and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Yeah. It's in looking to God that we get healed. It's in turning to him. Because in the world you might get devalued. There might be promotions in the workplace and you're not getting them. You feel really devalued. Remember I was driving lorries one time and I was with this company. It was a small enough company, but it just happened to be everybody else that came in used to get a better lorry than me. <laughs> I mean, I was, driving, uh, I was driving a croc. I thought I was going to have problems in my knees forever. I used to have to dance on the clutch to clutch it. There was no power steering in it. I used to have to swing it around when I got to the dump and they'd be dancing on one side of it. That's the truth. I think it was a 1989 or 83 lorry. It was really old. But there was one there. The next one was a 93, uh, a Hino. And then there was a brand new Scania lorry. But here people would come in and uh, they're only in a day and I'm there. I was there a few years and they're getting the new lorry. <laughs> How did that make me feel? I, was, I wasn't of any value to my boss. You know, I was glad that day that lorry broke down <laughs> and it couldn't be fixed. <laughs> Woo! God did it. God, get, God promoted me to a 1993 uh, Hino <laughs> where you could turn it with your finger. It was powerful. <laughs> and the clutch on it, you could do it like that. It was like, like getting a Rolls Royce to me, even though it wasn't even the proper one. Anyway, the point I'm making, sometimes even in your employment, you won't get the value that actually God wants to give you. But I used to, ha I, I, I was on fire for God. I used to have the Holy Spirit in my cab going around town and I'd be just praying and, I mean, it didn't really faze me. I used to hurt me in my heart sometimes and I wasn't at the place even that I should have probably now, if I had the maturity now, I'd actually go and talk to him. I'd confront it and say, how come... They're all getting new lorries, you know, and I'm driving the worst one. But, um, you know, I used to get it from God. I used to drive that lorry sometimes around town with tears flowing down my face, not out of pain, just experiencing his presence, experiencing the presence of God, and even praying for my boss that time because he was his own worst enemy. I used to cry out to God for him. But uh, we need to look to God. We need to turn our eyes to heaven. And sometimes we need to hear afresh. God will take that word from Psalm 139, 14 and just quicken it. Do you know when the Holy Spirit quickens a word to you? It brings healing. And God can quicken that and say, you are wonderfully made. Or quicken that one. I remember reading that 
in Genesis and really just getting revelation of that. Wow, I'm created in the image of God. I'm created in his likeness. It can actually lift you. It can lift you up. Amen. Praise God. I just want to invite the Holy Spirit to come and, and bring healing today. <clears throat> you know, I was so aware that 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 um, I think there's lots of wounds in Christians' lives. Even if you're saved 20 years, 25 years, that one for me, that incident happened to me about on the streets of London and the, what that left me with damage in my soul 33 years ago. I was 20 at the time. 33 years ago. And still, the stuff doesn't just go away. So let's just invite the Holy Spirit this morning. If the worship team come, and we're just going to... We're just going to invite the Holy Spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit wants to maybe uncover an area in your life. And maybe for you to begin a journey on, in this area. I think with me, that incident... What, what I talked about there was just an uncovering and I've begun a journey in that area or maybe there's an area that you are aware of and you just know I need healing I need healing from the Lord in that area so maybe just close our eyes now and Holy Spirit we just welcome you today Lord and Lord, we thank you that for what you speak over us I thank you that you speak words of healing. You speak words of life. You speak words that affirm us of who we really are, Lord. And Lord, you know in the midst of our lives, in the midst of the complexities of our soul, the wounds and even the damage that has been done in our lives. And we just come, we just ask you to come now, Holy Spirit. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come with your truth, to come with your healing, particularly into areas of our image, of how we see ourselves. And Lord, would you speak, even as you spoke into Gideon's life, specifically for the, in the area of the struggle that he had, I pray you will come and speak right now into hearts, into minds, into maybe areas that we've learned to live with, Lord. Areas that we've learned to live with but is less than what you have for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are created in the image of God. You are created in the likeness of God. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. You are of more value than they. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your healing, Jesus. Thank you for lifting the lid of a stuff that has held us back. Of a baggage, of a words, of experiences that happened to us that just pushed us down and suppressed us. Jesus, Jesus, just call on the Lord where you are. Maybe an area of heart has been exposed. Maybe words that were spoken, the Holy Spirit has brought it to the surface. Just invite Jesus, just in your own words. Just invite Jesus to come. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. He makes you to lie down in green pastures. He leads you beside still waters. He restores your soul. He restores 
your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm so aware how sometimes it's hard in a company of believers to sometimes shut ourselves in fully with God. But maybe something has just been exposed and maybe as you go home, you can journey and you can do business with God on. If you need some help, come and talk to some of the leaders. We can help you on that journey. We can pray for you. But just as we kind of try round things up, you know, if you're really aware and you'd like some prayer today, I just want, I'd love to pray for you or some, we can get some others to pray for you. But if you feel something has been, the Lord has put his finger on something or the light is shone in an area and you just want to just acknowledge it to God, really just to stand where you are and just to say, yeah, Lord, I want to bring that to you. I want to bring that area to you, Lord in my soul I want to bring that experience to you Lord thank you Holy Spirit just as a response to the Lord just stand and just lift it to God just lift that area up before Jesus He is your restorer. He is your healer. He is the one that begun a good work and will be faithful to complete it. You don't have to journey on. You don't have to carry that baggage. Hallelujah. Oh, yalala ma siri alamurundu. Jesus, shira lana mo shara barande. Ida de de biara mo sura barande de mende. Lord, I just pray for healing now for those ones that are bringing things to you, Lord. Jesus, thank you for that healing anointing right now, Lord. From the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Just pray for that healing into their lives. Healing into their souls. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for that good work that you're doing, Lord. That work of restoration. That work of deliverance that work of healing Lord I speak against anyone that's bringing words now that have been spoken over them I declare them words now to be broken in the name of Jesus I declare that no weapon of the enemy formed against them will prosper and every tongue that has risen against them in judgment is broken now in Jesus name I declare those words broken. Those words broken off your mind. Those words broken off your soul. In Jesus' name. I break them right now. Every condemning word I declare is broken in the name of Jesus. And I release you to rise up to be who God has called you and created you to be. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for healing, Lord. Thank you for healing Jesus. Hallelujah. Hira Boromo Sarabaranda Lamarasta. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Part of that was He's anointed us. 
preach the gospel, but to heal broken hearts. Part of the anointing. Part of what Jesus does. He's the healer of hearts. He's the binder of wounds. Lives that are lost, restored. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes we think as Christians we've got to have it all together. And even as leaders, we've got to come smiling. But you're a work in progress. Amen. You're a work in progress. There's a balance of being in faith, but there's also the reality of being able to open up and say, I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. My marriage is bleeding. My soul is bleeding. I'm hurting. I just bring it before Jesus. And he, he comes in as the great healer. His healing is so precious. I remember being healed at times in my soul, getting wounds healed. And it been st- the, the oil being so precious. I nearly wanted to get hurt again just to get healed. It's nearly worth it because the the oil of Jesus when he flows into those areas and his healing balm when he touches areas of our heart it's so precious amen I'm so conscious that obviously we're not we I'd love to be able to wave a wand over everybody and we're all complete but that's not the way the Lord works we're journey with him but my encouragement is as you journey with him, open up to this concept of just allowing Jesus into areas in your past. Sometimes we don't. Some teaching will actually divert us from that. You know, but just be open to maybe get some prayer. There are certain ministries, Zozo ministry. I've used Zozo up in Bray. Very good. I don't think they're open yet. They're opening in the new year. But that's where I would go personally. And just sit with people. There's two guys in there that I've been going to on and off over the last 10 years. And they know me. And I get the same two, two people all the time. And I'll just sit down and say, how are you doing? What's been going on? And I begin to talk. And they just minister then as the Holy Spirit leads. And we do. We need voices speaking into our life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's just worship God. Amen. As we come to an end. Let's stand to our feet and Becky lead us in something. Jesus, Jesus.